of you over at the Pope's interview? What interview? I hope you're not saying that. The Pope gave a big interview to his fellow Jesuits and it was simultaneously published in 16 Jesuit publications uh, across the world uh, the night before last, I think. So if you haven't read it, or you read only part of it, I strongly and highly recommend that you read the whole thing and see, see what your reaction is. Pope Francis has, from the very beginning, and again in this document, insisted that we need to get out of our navel-gazing in the church, our concern about the church, the church, the church, as if we were the society, as if we, we, we were the whole world, and get out into the real world and start caring about people as they are, and particularly for the poor. Not just in this country, but throughout the world. And why? Because that's the gospel. Because all of our brothers and sisters are our brothers and sisters. We see in the first reading from Amos a perfect example of the fact that all the prophets, some more than others, but all the ancient prophets, these Hebrew scriptures, their primary concern was the ritual of pressing the poor as the sure sign that they were no longer following the covenant. And also making political alliances with Egypt and other places. But the main thing was, you know, they're, you're not caring for one another. Or as you just heard, you're oppressing and choosing for one. Which is even worse. And if you look at the Gospel this Sunday, and that Sunday even more clearly with the parable of Lazarus, you're going to get a double whack here. So prepare yourself. Uh, it's clear that Jesus is speaking about, well, a number of things here in the way, in the way it's presented. But the Gospels are full of concern for the poor. The blessed are you poor, and woe to you rich, Jesus says. Jesus says it's, it's easier for a camel to enter through the eye of a needle than it is for a rich person to enter the kingdom of heaven. When have we ever put that out there as something to contemplate and to practice? No, we distract ourselves with contraception and gay marriage and all the things that the Pope Francis now says, frankly, that we become obsessed with, often putting, ob putting obligations on burdens on others, instead of facing the reality that we have to face our own reality of our own. False ideals, our own false securities, our own treatment of one another. I don't care what politics there is, but unless we have a practical, effective concern for all the poor of our city and our country and our world, we don't dare call ourselves Christians or religious in any way. Jesus says as much in the last judgment you'll be judged on not whether you can recite the creed correctly, but on whether we recognize him in the least of our brothers and sisters and minister to him. You fed me, you nourished me, you clothed me, you welcomed me, you visited me in the hospital and in prison. That's how we'll judge us. Whether we belong to Christ, whether we recognize Christ. This is the gospel. Luke's gospel has been called the gospel of the poor. Pope Francis chose the name Francis because Francis was the poor one, the poor one who ministered to the poor. Like Jesus, who proclaimed his inaugural, his inaugural address in the synagogue in Luke's Gospel of, of Nazareth was Isaiah 61, the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. <laughs> We'd rather distract ourselves with all sorts of other things than facing up to that responsibility. Or the letter of Timothy, not this passage tonight, but later on in the same letter, it says, be content with sufficiency. Be content with what you need to live a dignified life. Those who want to be rich, the letter says, are falling into a trap. And the love of money is the root of all evil. Wow. When have we ever practiced that? Or believe me. Why is it so dangerous to be rich? Because we put our security in something else. And probably we wind up oppressing a fool who, as we found out in a newspaper article this week, can still be working two jobs right here in our own city and still have to live in a shelter. There's no living wage and drug prices and housing prices are so out of this ballpark. 
What's wrong with us? Now food stamps are inaccessible. How are we going to really minister for to one another? Which master are we going to serve? I read a story in a Catholic magazine once about a priest who was preaching on this very gospel, reading this very gospel, and he came to the land of mine. This was in a very tony, you know, upscale neighborhood, with a lot of Catholics. And he came to that last line, you cannot serve God and man. <laughs> and he imagined that he felt this wave of resistance coming up from the congregation. Oh, yes, we can. We love to do that. And what do we do with it? What are our ideas? You say, well, <laughs> there's no danger in that niche. Especially not in this society, so what's in it for me and what's in the gospel for me? Well, all those other sayings of Jesus in today's gospel, be faithful in a little and you'll be faithful in much. Make friends for yourself out of dishonest wealth by distributing alms generously so that they can welcome you to the eternal habitations. Uh, all, all that kind of thing. Uh, be, uh, be faithful and generous in, in the use of money in this world and not just for yourself. Uh, so e even what you can do, you must do always in the perspective of caring for others. This is the essential gospel. It's not some socialist, libertarian, you know, scheme that we dreamed of. This is the gospel. And unless we care for the poor, we are wasting our time in church and probably the rest of our lives as well. Whether we're trying to be rich or not, our hearts are not yet open. And I'd just like to conclude with some of the other basic perspectives of Pope Francis' interview, which I think is so central. You know, this idea of going out into the world, meeting people where they are in the world today. I, I was a Jesuit for five years myself, so I understand very much the spirituality from which Pope Francis is coming from, emphasizing discernment, listening in prayer, deep meditative prayer, as taught by St. Ignatius, listening for the voice of the Spirit, as St. Ignatius says, to instruct us on how to live our lives moment by moment, what our calling is uh, at, any, at any time, how we can best serve Christ, what are we doing to serve Christ? To have this kind of openness and listening to the Holy Spirit instead of having regularly cooked up answers and blindness and prejudices of all kinds to guide us. This poverty of spirit which allows us really to actually listen to what the Spirit is saying to us now. So Pope Francis says we can't just be imposing formulas and moral rules and sets of you know, collections of this or that idea or, or, or regulations, failing to see the context and failing to see what it means for people of our time. And the people of, the, of our time are also going to teach us. He says very clearly, which is so obvious, and thank God that's what he's saying, that history changes and evolves, and our understanding of the gospel of the human condition and of God deepens and grows as we go on. We have to be open to discern, as the council called, the signs of the times. And the council reminded us, too, of a, doc of a doctrine, which they didn't make up, they got it from Cardinal Newman and beyond, blessed Cardinal Newman. The sense of the faithful, the sense of fidelity, the people as a whole, in communion with their pastors, are infallible. Wow! A pope! Starting by saying, you're infallible. And the only reason the Pope is infallible is because the whole church is infallible. And he represents that at the top. But he's reminding us of that truth that all of us together, as we grow and evolve as a culture and a society and a church, are infallible. So we got to listen. Listen to the voices of the people, the signs of the times, what are we learning about the human condition now? that's different from what we knew before. Certainly involved slavery at one time. What is it saying about games today? Anything? Got to listen to find that? And he goes on to say religion has a right to give its opinion, he says, its opinion in the service of the people. 
But no one should dare interfere in the spiritual lives of anyone. How's that for a political program? Don't interfere with the dignity and the spiritual lives of anybody. You can give your opinion, your considered opinion, but it's finally up to them. And may God give a dignity of choice. As he says, God gave us choice and freedom. And we need to take the responsibility for that. Nobody should get in the way of that freedom. So be careful. This is so refreshing. Because it makes us humble and able to stand back. What is really important here? What is the Spirit trying to tell me and the community now at this point in history, which may be different, or progression beyond what we knew before? It's always been going on. It will always go on. And the Pope says, if you want to go back to the past and hold on to easy formulas, you'll find nothing. He says, you'll find nothing. You'll lose the Spirit. You'll lose yourself. This is revolutionary. Because it's just the gospel, which is revolutionary. So are we up for it? 